going to, we're conducting an interview with the Reverend Fred now in relation to the Copts, Egypt and Australia. Mr. Nile, years ago when I was writing a book, I think it was about 2005, I referred to something I'd read in the newspapers some years before. It was that you had pointed out that the people who are being persecuted in large numbers, mm. persecuted not only as to their property but uh, also their person and sometimes their lives, are the Christians in the mm. Middle East. That's correct. They seem to be at a particular disadvantage and yet uh, their, their position does not seem to be recognised in relation to the refugees being brought into Australia. Mm. That's true and sadly even when Mr Rudd as Foreign Minister visits uh, Egypt, he, I understand he put no protest in uh, about the welfare of those uh, Christian cops in Egypt, uh, 10 million or more. They used to be the majority, obviously. Egypt was originally a Christian nation under the Copts, literally means Egypt, Egyptian, as the original people of the, of the pyramids, Pharaoh, these are the original Egyptians. And there was a flood of Arabic people coming in from Islam, uh, whom I understand they welcomed initially, not realising eventually they would become the majority, and they would become the minority, and in fact become the persecuted minority, and treated as second class citizens. When the Arab invasion came, they received mm. them, as you say, but as, as you also say, they became a persecuted minority. Mm. Seems to me, just looking at the books, <coughs> that it was only in the period of the British protectorate and then the constitutional monarchy, mm. that they were treated well. That's and right. once, uh, once Farouk was overthrown by Naguib and Nasser, mm. the, they gradually discriminated against the Copts. And, uh, for example, as I understand it, just to repair a church mm. in Egypt requires such a bureaucratic rigmarole that is virtually impossible to do. Literally, it required a presidential signed authority from the president. Imagine how difficult that would be in the midst of government to say we want to repair a church or a church wall or a church toilet and it never happened. You couldn't get that authority and the local government would say we don't have permission mm. and in fact when they did still sometimes had to repair something because it was falling over, uh, the army would sometimes bulldoze the very thing they'd repaired. I understand that under the Howard government the Australian government uh, belatedly recognised Mm. that the Copts were being persecuted and that this would be recognised in the immigration arrangements that Australia made concerning Egypt. I think you had something to do with that. Yes, yeah, so I did a lot of lobbying with the Howard government who were very supportive but it did raise some issues about uh, discrimination and it appeared that in many of our overseas embassies in the Middle East where people have to apply uh, to come to Australia uh, in many places, the interpreters and the actual staff had been hired as Arabic-speaking staff, and many of those, if not the majority, were Muslims. And it seemed that the Muslims were rejecting uh, Christian applications and stamping approved on the Muslim application, because I had personal complaints from many individuals who eventually got here, but they said I had to apply for six years but the, the other person in the queue got stamped approved. I was told to go away, and there's no legitimate reason for the people to be rejected.